All right, guys, what's going on? Fisher Defense Group here going over our Cry AVS setup. Um, got a lot of questions about this. We posted a TikTok on this, and I got a decent amount of views. And a lot of questions asking about specific things on here. People are wanting a list. People are wanting to know why we have this and why we have that, and you're an idiot for not doing this. Whatever. Um, your experience may vary on what you do, so what we do for a living and what you guys do for a living are probably going to vary. So... We're going to dive into it. We're going to leave a bunch of links down below that if we can't find the exact link or you guys want something cheaper, we'll have a link that's going to be sort of the same thing that you could try out to see if that's going to fit for you, right? So again, this is our Cry AVS. Uh, this is what we like, and this is what we are typically running. Um, this plate carrier is being issued to SOCOM right now. So you have uh, Active Duty Green Berets. I have a buddy that's running this right now uh, who is a Green Beret, and... Typically what I see if they're not running a JPC or something else that they're not issued what they're running is just the play bags Right, so just this top piece and then the rear piece and this velcro that meets kind of like a spirit of systems or a t-rex arms or something like that Okay, so this whole system has the harness built into it, right? So if you look around you can see that there's black on this piece over here and all the way around and what it is is a harness system Right, so the harness system as you can see from the side is basically this separate piece gets the bags to stand off from the side Okay and then there is a section inside that is just shock cord that allows you to essentially expand and breathe, right? So if you notice that whenever you put on a plate carrier, when you put it on, it might be just a little too tight when you go to breathe. It's just kind of restricting your breathing. The nice part about this is that there's shock cord so I can go and pull and you can see that it is working with me rather than against me. So we like that a lot. It tends to be a little bit easier on the load bearing stuff. So as we get down deeper into it, there's a flat pack on here. There's other things and recruitments to this that make it a more weight rated system than just some of the smaller stuff. Uh, so it's just ultimately gonna be up to you on what you want. This has worked well for us. We've ran this for almost two years now and I've not had an issue out of it, okay? So we're gonna dive into it and I'll explain things in a little bit more depth as we go. So we're gonna start from the top, okay? And then we're gonna work our way down. And we'll go on the sides and then we'll go on the back. We'll go over everything just for you guys. So up top, we have the juggernaut mount, essentially what it is. It's just a phone holder. Um, you have a little bit of piece up here of Velcro that allows you to stick your morale patch, whatever you want, whatever weird patches you guys have, they can fit up there. This piece right here is gonna be from Patch Panel, okay? Uh, patch Panel is nice enough to give us a discount code of 10% off. Right, so you wanna do some weird stuff up top, write whatever you want, your last name, you got everything, um, you can do whatever you want. I have my blood type up here, a flag, than our last name. So the nice part about this case system is that they make multiple cases rather than Cogworks, which we've used in the past and had great success out of. These just offer more to us for different phones that we are using throughout the time goes, okay? So this is an iPhone right here. Uh, that's gonna be the 11 Pro Max. And they make everything. They make Android, iPhone. There's a lot of stuff that you can do that just Cogworks can't provide for us right now. And Garrett, if you're listening, I want new iPhone cases, okay? So the best part about this is the multiple attachments that if you're wanting, running a wave relay, if you're running anything else, uh, you could basically have a piece that comes in here. You can route your comm cables however you want. And there's just multiple things that just Cogworks can't offer, okay? So then we're gonna move up just a little bit. So we have the Axle Advanced zipper pouch up here for the AVS. Up top, we are running a little right in the rain, we have extra batteries in here, just CR123s that are wrapped in duct tape, just to kind of provide just a little bit extra sealant, and just in case you need another piece, right? So if you need another piece, what you could do is just peel this off, use the batteries, or put them somewhere else, put them back in here. You still have another extra piece of duct tape. There's also a set of foam roll-ups in there, so just for your ears. If someone, because someone always forgets your ear pro, right? Let's be honest. So now that we're done with this piece up top, we have the Disco 32 push to talk. Uh, this is just a Nexus push to talk. It's pretty similar. You guys are seeing this everywhere. Um, it's really nice. Works out great. We've been big fans of Disco 32. We have multiple systems with them. Uh, I don't have enough good stuff to say. I have this routed in a specific way that kind of channels it underneath, and I go back over here to my Motorola, right? So then if I come down, we have the Haley Strategic Micro Test Rig. Um, just three mags up front. I have more in the back. So And these are just held in through Haley's. I think it's the MP2 mag pouches, which are fantastic. 
you know, great retention. You can run everywhere and you're not going to yard sell your equipment everywhere, right? So and then you have two on the side, just clock pouches. You can put whatever mag. They fit 320s. They fit all that stuff. Um, we're just not fans of 320s here. So then we'll go to the front. Just simple American IR patch. And it's the same with this piece up top. These are all IR reflective. Um, so then we can go in here. And what you're going to see is there's just a little bit of everything. So we have a first beer tube adapter that's just an extra for this, just in case something happens and these break. Um, because we have talked to a bunch of Marine Corps guys that are issued these, and they've had a lot of troubles with them. So it might just be the first iteration of them going out, but they had have trouble with them in the past, right? Whether that be this system right here just gets clogged up with dirt and sand and debris. I know one guy has told me that he's had issues with this in the past. And then a big tension point right here is where they tend to break. So we have one up top, and then we have another one in the rear of this flat pack. So that's just an extra, okay? And then in the front, we have an SSE pouch, which is basically site-sensitive equipment or site-seizure equipment, okay? So what it is, it's just a bag. So this is just meant to put whatever equipment that you need to get out on the X or wherever you are. If you're at a Milsim event and your buddy goes down because he didn't drink enough water because you guys don't drink water and you just drink Diet Coke all day. Um, so essentially that's what it is. It's just a bag to put extra equipment in. If your buddy goes down or something happens, you have another means of carrying stuff that's not gonna be in your backpack, not in your assault pack, not in the flat pack. It's just another way and I always recommend it. Okay, so then we'll go in here. We have a face covering, just a balaclava, just something simple, okay? Nothing too crazy. And all this is just a face covering. So if we have media around, there's a media presence. But there's something else like, I don't want you guys to see who I am in public. This is really simple to do. Uh, it's just a nice piece of privacy and insurance on your privacy, okay? So this other thing that we have is going to be an extra battery for our Motorola. We are running the XTS 5000s. Um, these are the best bang for the buck right now as far as um, private sector goes. They are encryptable. We have AES-256, so 256-bit encryption on these radios. Um, they're bulletproof, man. There's not really anything you could do to them. You could drop them. You could hammer in a nail. The only downside is that they are pretty heavy for what they are. So I, I will say that much. So if we go up front, essentially what we're having here is just a wrench, which basically can mount my suppressor or take something off the end of my pistol, which is basically just the thread covering. So, and then on the other side, we have a Sharpie, which there are thousands of reasons why you need a Sharpie. So just carry one. Mark targets, write on a tourniquet, write anything. We have a paint pen. Uh, as you can see, we paint pen up here what calibers these are rather than running 300 blackout and a 5.56 and it going boom, okay? Um, then we have here just a multi-tool. Everyone needs a multi-tool on anything that you have. It is single-handedly the most used piece of kit we have is the multi-tool. We have other picks and stuff just kind of just for administrative stuff right so just whether it just be trying to get something mollied onto here uh, a pick is just an easy way for us to kind of grab it and go through if our multi-tool cannot give us the ability to get into that right so I, what i like to do as far as these zippers go i like to have them on my left side because my right side is primarily going to be where my rifle is so my left side gives me the ability to open this up gain access to anything that i need or anything that i'm going to do Okay, so it just, it frees up that extra space in my hand, and this hand is going to be pretty much the do-all hand. So, and as we said, left hand, so we'll go to the left way. So if you look here, we have the quick in and out system, which is going to be the first beer tubes. So if I pull back and then up, this comes off entirely, and it allows us to get into the vest quick, and you're not wearing out Velcro, because I can't tell you how many times I've had to take a JPC, a spirit is anything that I've used the absolute dog shit out of the Velcro and I've had to take it to a seamstress and I've had to have someone go through and retack on Velcro and it's never a good time. So this is just basically a separate piece that allows us to get in and out. But again, we have a backup. So we have a backup piece to this and it's easier than having to take it to a seamstress, to get someone to do Velcro, right? So, and then the other part is we're going to be able to enter and exit. That wasn't supposed to happen. Okay, so we're going to be able to enter and exit through this, right? And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to enter and exit through this. So you can put this back through, put this back on, you line these pieces up, and you go down, and it's locked in place, okay? So an easy way to get in and out of this system, what we found is the ANA Tactical Cobra Buckle. Uh, typically there is a plastic piece that goes on here. Um, it's just a plastic buckle. I wasn't too big of a fan of that just for many reasons, I've had a lot of plastic things break. So you undo it, you undo this piece, 
at the same time or later, whatever you want to do. Okay. And then you're able to get, pull this system out, get in, get out. And then you can buckle this as you go, put that piece in, throw that system back, go back on here, find it, line it up. And then you're good to go and you're in and out. It's super quick. It's super easy and it's painless. Okay. So we'll rotate around to the side and what we have here is a Tor Serpent. So we have the Tor Serpent mounted in a Ferro Concepts wing thing. Okay. The Tor Serpent is an excellent knife. It's got a ring so I can kind of dangle it. If I have to do anything else with my hands, I'm free to, right? And again, it's mounted on the Ferro Concepts wing thing. Uh, you can mount pretty much anything on that guy and it's super sturdy. I've had it on there for about a year and a half now. And I've not had any issues. Okay. So here is the kicker. Everyone always says you got a lot of mag pouches. Okay. Yes, this is a mag pouch, but it's also another pouch that I can grab. Say our Zen. If you want to sponsor us, we're here Zen. We love you. Okay. I can take my Zen pouch and I can shove it in there. I can put anything in there from a strobe, whatever you want. A pack of smokes. You name it, we got it. We can put it in here, and then you can barter with these guys. You can do whatever you want, right? So that's that. It's not just a magazine pouch. It's for anything and everything, and that's why I have these on here, because it takes up a little space. It weighs next to nothing, and it's just nice to have rather than an empty section of cummerbund. It's not like it weighs a boatload, and it's just sagging me down. It's another place for me to put things that, as I go, I might need, right? So if I want to do... A pistol mag, for example, I could throw that in there and it's good to go. Um, it's really just for whatever we need, whenever we want. And mission dictates gear as it always does, right? So we'll move to the back where the flat pack is, okay? So the flat pack, this mainly back part in here is going to be another chest rake. And that's just to showcase storage so that you guys know how much you could fit in here, right? So I'm going to come around. And what you could see is we have a source three liter hydration pack in here. And it, if you pull this chest rig out, you can line the back of it with Velcro and stick it on here and it's going to stick, right? I have a liter and a half in here now, which is plenty for just a plate carrier. I have extra in my salt pack that goes with me anytime that this goes out, okay? So up top, we have zip ties, right? Zip ties in case you want to tie your love doll down, in case you want to do anything with it. There are so many different applications that we have found these useful and anyone in the service will tell you the same thing. So the zip ties are very nice. We have extra shock cord for the inner part of this weight distribution system. And I can't tell you how much of a lifesaver that could be in the future, right? And in the front, again, like we mentioned, what we have is another first beer tube, right? And then on the inside of this is the connector piece. So if I take this piece and I made it up, it's basically just that first beer tube system. So I have a backup. I have one of the attachment and I have two of the pieces that are known to break, right? So it's super simple, super easy, and it's always nice to have extras, and they weigh nothing. And then lastly, the last thing I keep in here, other than medical items that change out from time to time, is going to be the source UTA. So the quick adapter. The nice part about this is if you're on the go, right? This is a mouthpiece. If I'm on the go, what I can do is I can take this, insert it into here, and all I do is I put a water bottle, I can put a hose tab into here, I can put whatever I want and invert it, meaning you stick it up for the people who don't know what that is. You stick it up and then it'll feed directly into the water bladder and it'll fill it entirely up with however much water you have. Uh, so it's super nice, super convenient, and it keeps me from having to ask someone, hey, can you open up my pack and refill this? I can refill this on the go with the water bottle, crush it, bury it if I need to, or just toss it and go, right? So. That is what we keep in the very front pouches of the flat pack. And again, just an IR reflective flag so that people know we are not terrorists. So let's get into the flat pack itself. Here is the showcase item, okay? So what we have is gonna be the Haley Strategic D3 CRX, I believe. If I have these wrong, I'll edit it in the notes, right? So there's Four pistol mag, four rifle mag, there's admin pouches up here. And again, this is just to showcase the space that this thing has. Um, typically what we do is we have preset Velcro lined clear packs that we can put up here for medical most of the time, for comms equipment, for wires, anything, albeit. Just so much stuff that you can actually put in here. And it's all Velcro lined. So if you need to do anything, put a piece of 10 cent Velcro on there, 
slap it on and it's good to go. It's not going to fall out. You're going to have your buddy say, hey, um, I need the clear panel that has a red zipper on it. And you can find it and be like, ah, red zipper. I'm a Marine. I eat red crayons. Let's go. Rip it off. You're good to go. Got your medical equipment, your comms, crayons, whatever you guys want. Okay. So that's our flat pack. That's how we use it. If we want, another thing we can do is we can expand this, right? So we can expand this out to be even larger. So as you can see, this thing will go out pretty daggone far. Um, I like to keep it as flat as possible. That is just me and just what I like to do, okay? The flat pack has many utilities, and the nice part is, is if I pull this chest rig out, it'll com completely collapse into something that's so small that I can put my rucksack on and I don't feel it, right? And the harness system of this does a great job distributing all the weight on here, and I don't ever run into an issue. So lastly, what we're gonna touch on is just the hydration in here. The hydration, what we're running, it's just source. Uh, we've used camelbacks in the past and we've had a lot of issues with camelbacks bursting. I don't know if it's the material or the heat that we keep them in and we just haven't had any bad luck with source, but as always, there's goods and bads of everything. So um, the main thing is going to be the attachment system, right? So this is going to be the same thing and the same deal that we had with the previous bladder that I showed you. Just a quick disconnect. So I can take that UTA filter and do anything with it. So it's nice just to have something that's quick and easy to do and easy to access and not have to have someone come through, unscrew the back of my camel back and fill it in and then in the middle of a vehicle movement, okay? So another thing I wanna show, and I have so many questions on this specifically, is the tubular nylon. I'm not gonna go that into it because Fred over at Spirit Systems does a fantastic job of explaining the uses and applications of this system itself. Um, to get into it, you can make a stretcher out of it. You can cut it up as easy as you want. And as much as you want, you can make enough to repel off of a two-story building with as much that I have here. And I have this in a lobster tail. It's going to be the knot, if you want to call it that. And all I have to do is pull up on here. And then there is a section right there that I can pull over my shoulder. And I can just keep pulling, right? So I can just keep pulling it out. And then it'll feed me enough sections as I want. And then I can kind of cut it. Or I can have someone do this where i could just have someone pull this bungee cord that i have the shock cord and then just rip it out and then we can go to work on whatever we need to do and since we're back here you're going to notice that there's this weird tan snake line in here what that is is a disco 32 vmas antenna so this is an antenna um it's something that we've used for i want to say going on three or four years now and it's been nothing but great i know cattail makes another one that is very reasonably priced if not cheaper. Um, the only reason I like it is because this is black. It's not shiny as shit. And again, if super shiny is what you're worried about and you have someone that can eyeball that, you have bigger problems than what you think you ever will. So this is essentially routed through the three-piece section of the cummerbund and then underneath that you could see right here. Um, I had this line going all the way up and snaking through the harness system itself here and then going down and around, right? So it'll all lead back to the Motorola. And the nice part is, is that I can undo this. And then I can take this piece off or buy another connector to put it on a different radio. So it has multi-uses. It's not just one antenna just for the Motorola's. It's for everything, okay? So, and again, the Motorola's that we're running are the XCS 5000s. Uh, they're the best bang for the buck. You could beat the living hell out of them and never have an issue. Uh, you can encrypt them. These have AES-256 on them. Uh, we have them programmed for multiple encryption channels. Uh, there's so much we can go into on a radio that I just don't want to go into. But the connector right here, all you do is you take this piece, you unclip it, and you pull it off, and you don't have to have a radio in there if you don't want to, if you're not running radios. You don't have to airsoft match telling your mom that, hey, uh, when in the hell are my bagel bites going to be done, and when can I come eat? So, and we have this in an STAC pouch. Uh, it's the XTAC, STAC. Uh, XTS 5000 pouch. It's the best one we found that fits it super good. It's pretty slim line. Uh, I can't say enough good stuff about STAC. So we'll put this guy back on just for a second and we'll dive into the harness system just a little bit more so that we can explain it to you guys in case you have any more questions and we can kind of answer it as we go through. So again, the harness system is what separates this from just a normal carrier, right? So the harness system is going to be the interior of this. And if I rotate this, my cameraman could tell me if you guys can see this on the inside right here. So 
Yeah, so here's the harness system. This distributes the weight so well to the point where I don't even notice how much this weighs, okay? And in the reality of it, this is going to weigh with water. Um, we're going to do seven mags, fully loaded, a full amount, a liter and a half of water. Uh, radio and everything, this is weighing in at about 28 pounds. And I know some of you guys are like, oh my God, that's so heavy. Like, not really. Uh, the level four plates we're running are around four pounds a piece, just under that, I believe. I'm not too sure. So most people that are running level four plates, they're going to be about 10 to 12 pounds a piece. So you do the math already, right? So you're doing that on just a normal rig, plus each one of these magazines are going to weigh a pound, right? So you do the math. Typical fighting loadout is seven, six plus one in the gun. Some people do eight. But to be honest, we have way more than that in our assault pack in the corner over there. And I cannot preach that there's not enough water and not enough magazines in the world, and not enough ammo that you will need in a situation that requires it. Um, just, just speaking on firsthand accountability and just the multiple people that I talk to, uh, being everywhere from Africa to even here, there's just so much that you are going to need and things that are going to change over the course of your lifetime in your mission and what your role is in your team, right? So there's not enough magazines, there's not enough ammo, there's not enough water in the world. You are going to need ammo, water, comms, and medical. Medical is the last thing I wanted to touch on because that is such a, an iffy subject. I know enough to get me by, I know enough to prolong someone's life in a case of, a, of trauma. Um, get training. Get training on medical, get training on anything that you can and you can get your hands on and what you can afford, right? This is an expensive piece of kit. This whole thing is so expensive. We've accrued this over time in piecing this together, right? So spend your money wisely and buy what you can at the time, okay? Don't go completely flat broke on this. It's not worth it, I promise you. Unless you do this for a living and you are in and out, sleep, eat, and breathe this type of stuff and you do this for work like we do, it's a little bit different. I still don't recommend you go broke. I still recommend that you take care of yourself and you take care of your family before you do anything else, right? So medical. Um, the medical I have on here is just enough to essentially get me by or I can toss this down to someone that has a sucking chest wound or something along that line. Uh, it's just enough to give until the medic can show up and he has his bag of whatever accoutrements and things that he needs, okay? So what we have this in is going to be the Ferro Concepts and Forward Observations Group Roll One Medical Pouch. Uh, what I appreciate the most about this is it takes up very little space, if not any, uh, or any that you will notice, okay? And it's this guy right here. So you probably didn't even see it throughout the whole video and you're like, what on earth is that? So I'll show you, okay? So all you do, you rip it out and it's got an access from both sides, okay? So both sides you have access to this which is a nice part. If you're gonna do anything medical wise, you want access to both your right and left hand because one arm may be gone, let's face it. Uh, and if you really wanna look into it, look at what's happening in Ukraine, man. Uh, people are going out there expecting to fight Russians and you can go in the hospitals right now and you can see that there are dudes in there that have legs blown off and arms blown off and they haven't even seen a Russian. It's nothing but artillery and mortars and it's a fucking nightmare, right? It's an absolute nightmare. So what we're gonna do is we're going to break this down. And like I said, you want access to both hands, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this down and I'm gonna open it. And it's super simple, but it's on the bleeding edge of carrying the most amount of shit that I would want and a lot of other people, right? So as you can see, we have a nasal tube. Then we have just a couple other things, just some lube pouches for the nasal tube. Nice lube. So. We have some chest seals from North American Rescue. If you don't use North American Rescue, you're wrong. We have some clotting agents. Uh, from what I've talked to and the people that I've talked to, uh, the best anticoagulants that we've found and that we've used in the past is going to be Cellox. Uh, we've used Quick Clot before. I know the, the military has a very big contract with them, but Cellox seems to be the best and works in the shortest amount of time. Uh, but again, I haven't used it to the point where it's in a life-saving role. Uh, we just have a lot of training behind this. And it's a little bit more expensive than you would do with quick clot or anything else like that. But I promise you in the time that you're going to need it, it's worth it by the cell ox, okay? And we'll have links to everything that we use. North American Rescue, the hyphen vent twin chest seal. So you get a two pack of them rather than just one. Don't be an idiot and only get one chest seal. So uh, the quick clot, I'm not going to show you just because it's quick clot. Everyone knows what quick clot is. If you don't know what it is, Google it. It takes you five seconds. Okay. 
So, and again, the nice part about this is that it just stows away very easy and very compact and in a manner that not a lot of people are going to bark or complain at. But everyone's going to complain about something. Everyone has something, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this back up. I'm going to bring it up again. And boom, we're done. Okay? So it's super easy, super simple, and it just goes back in there, and it's done. Um, again, like I said, the medical thing is just one of those things that you seek out a professional, right? So when the military wants to learn a, spe like a specific set of skills, whether they be riding a dirt bike, anything, they go to people that specialize in that. Nine times out of ten, they aren't in the military, right? So when they go to long-range shooting, a lot of the times they'll send those guys to, to very qualified individuals that will shoot competition, or they specialize in that specific role. So don't go to just a military instructor on TCCC, which is medical care for trauma, right? Just to put it simply. Go to someone that specializes in that. If you can go to your local fire department and build a good community and a solid standing around that, please do that, man. There's one thing that you get out of this video is building a community, finding people like you, and not just sticking to the one person that tells you everything is right all the time. You want different opinions. You want differing opinions. And people that are going to tell you, like, hey, man, you're wrong here, right? And here's why. Those are the people that are going to be your best friends. So I'm going to move on. I'm done with my rant. We're going to come back around. And lastly, I'm going to show you one of my favorite pieces of this, okay? So what I have here is mainly all these parts and pieces that allow me to adapt are from Axel Advanced, and we'll link them down in the bio. Um, essentially, you have the adaptive placard for the AVS. All I do is unclip this, and then this other piece over here, and then I can attach in any of these test rigs you see here, right? So here we have just the cry kangaroo pouch with the blue force gear attached on it. So again, these are just put whatever you want, storage items, tourniquets, MS-2000 strobes, anything really. And again, Axel Advance coming in for the win. These are just their Cry placard adapters. If I want, I can go through my, a couple of my favorite chest rigs. But the Spirit of Systems Mark IV. Um, another pouch that just has a bunch of other stuff in it. I have some extra batteries in here, a right in the rain, an extra pocket knife. Um, you have two pistol mags, a pen, because you never know when you're going to need a pen. You see that trend here. You have all these magazines. And then you have the Mark V, which is starting to become one of my favorites. Uh, we have this EZ Scorpion, because that's one of our favorites. And again, these just clip in through the Swift clips, as you can see right here. There are extra clips on the side, because this is going to be used as a chest rig, too. So and then you have the Grimlocks, which basically you just push, pull. You put gloves, chem sticks, anything you want in there. Chem sticks are just rave club sticks. Just don't let people lie to you. It's just twice as expensive. So. That's going to be our AVS. Um, if you have any questions, again, drop a comment, drop a like. Uh, anything helps out. The last thing I want to say is we recently lost a friend, a good homie of ours in Ukraine. Uh, his name is Lance. So we have a GoFundMe down there. If you guys want to throw in a couple bucks towards that, we really appreciate that. He's a good dude. We knew him really well. So last thing I wanted to touch on, uh, again, if you guys have any questions, hit us up. More than happy to answer. Again, you can go to our TikTok page or here. Drop a comment. Drop anything you want. We'll leave everything in the bio. We love you guys a lot. Thanks. Nerds. Okay. Oh my god. Alright. Will you go grab the rain out of my car really quick? I'm going to start this video. Here, car keys.